Yeah, the cheers for both of these crews coming out of those boat tens, I think, was the loudest we've heard, not only today, but for the whole of this week. And certainly, uh, a lot of alumni of both of these schools always come down to watch this Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup final. And as they're starting to come to attention now, attention. both coxes with their hands down and ready to go here in this final of the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup. And the cheers will be from start to finish here as St Paul's go blasting out of the blocks to try and take a lead over the National Schools champion, St Edwards. Yes, a blasting start from both crews. I'm not surprised to see it. I'm going to be interested to see how the Coxes get on steering this because both these Coxes haven't found it completely easy. They have been warned along the way. So we're looking here at the St Paul's crew getting away nicely. And you see there, Rule Marchant in, this, in the Coxing seat just looking to his right. They'll come out the top of the island and catch a bit of wind. And it looks like St Paul's at the moment are just behind and it's St Edwards who are edging out to what? A third of a length lead. Yeah, and St Edward's just a, a little bit lower on the rating off the end of the island here, just underrating St Paul's, who uh, are kind of famously always peak well for this regatta, coached by Bobby Thatcher, but also um, a lot of input from the great Donald Leggett uh, into this St Paul's crew. Yeah, we can expect St Paul's crew to row long and with a strong rhythm that, yeah, Bobby Thatcher and Donald Leggett are so keen on, but it's the Johnny Singfield coach crew from St Edward's who are still moving here. They've taken this out, they've moved the whole time we've been watching that side-by-side -side angle. They've been inching away, taking an inch a stroke, and that's the sort of strong, strong move that you see happening here. Little looks there to the left by Felix Jameson, the 15-year-old Cox in this St Edwards School, a, certainly the youngest athlete from across both of these boats. And yeah, Felix Jameson in that coxing seat, he has been worn previously in the regatta, and I wonder if he's going to get worn now, but it's not, not something you want to have, you want to just keep it nice and tight on that line, you don't want to have to use that rudder because it is a little credit card size rudder, it's small, but it does disturb the speed, it does disturb the balance, and you can see that boat, that umpire's launch is in the centre station, so as it is, that St Edward's boat is on the right station, but the blades are coming across, and I would have thought at the moment that Cox is lucky not to be getting warned and pushed back onto the station. To be fair, he's moving now, so I think the umpire's probably happy that it's seen they were going in the right direction. And I wonder with St Edward's here, you know, that huge amounts of pressure on their shoulders. And uh, look, again, being warned, you called it going back to their station. I think he's just really trying to push the limits of what the buck station can hold for them. Absolutely, looking to push the, the limits. And you, and you wouldn't blame uh, Felix Jake, uh, Jameson in that stroke seat for doing, in that coxing seat for doing that, because he wants to give his crew the best chance that he can. I think St Edwards really need to watch out here because if St Paul's even have a sniff of winning this event, they are the uh, the second in the league table overall, as it were, for the PE, for the Princess of the They've won it seven times before. Teddy's, as we say, they've last won this in 1999. So they really need to close the door here with a huge amount of pressure on their shoulders. St Paul's certainly know how to win Henley. They certainly do. And we're looking here at the St Edwards crew. And I'm just looking at the blade work and whether those blades going into a headwind, let's be fair to them, they're going to a headwind, but whether those blades are just getting caught in the wind a little bit before they're getting into the water, thinking how hard are they having to work and whether this St Paul's crew might just be in a slightly smoother rhythm. But they're into the third quarter now, so we're seeing it now from behind that blade where it looks pretty good. It's a difficult shot. It's not a fair shot when you're looking at them from in front because we don't often see that picture from here. That blade work's looking pretty sharp and pretty good. Yes, St Edward's certainly have been able to get a really good run out of the boat, even in this headwind. It's been a head cross all morning here on the Thames, and St Edward's are just trying to get ahead as far as they possibly can, because St Paul's will have the opportunity to close the gap in that print, those sprinting stages on the Berkshire Station. Yeah, I'm sure St Paul's will be looking to sprint and close that gap, and St Edward's rowers will have seen that number two board getting hauled up, which shows that they are the lead boat. They'll see the number one, which would show not quite clear water. The number one board will still just be overlapping the number two board, just as St Paul's are hanging on to that overlap with St Edward's. St Paul's steering a really strong, tight line. I would expect to see them staying really close to the booms to so get the maximum they can out of that station they've got on Berkshire there. 
John Hedger warning once again St Edwards to get back to the Buckinghamshire station. They're not near St Paul's, but any adjustments they have to respond. And look at that blade work from St Paul's here. That is absolutely sublime. Sublime blade work, and it's that rhythm that we've seen from these St Paul's crews in years past. Just how they're able to let the boat come towards them. Yeah, their stroke man there, uh, Philip Wolfensberger. He stroked the winning crew last year in this Princess Elizabeth Challenge Club. So he is certainly the best man to have the keys to try and take them to victory once again. Yeah, he's got the keys sitting in that stroke seat. He needs to rev the engine now. They're coming into the enclosures. The St Edward's school crew are getting warned. I don't know how much they're going to respond. If I was the coach, if I was Johnny Sinkford, I wouldn't want them to respond too much. I don't think they are responding too much. If anything, they're really just holding that position. John Hedge is going to be going for the flag again. If there's a clash, then St Edward's school are in real trouble. If there's only interference, so it's not a foul, then I think they'll probably get away with that. Yeah, St Edward's pushing the boundaries, isn't it? Actually quite good coxing, I think, and really brave of someone of just 15 years of age. Felix Jameson, with all that noise in the final, is going to be feeling so much pressure, but here comes the pulls. Well, the line between brave and reckless is pretty, pretty small as it is. I think St Edward's have responded enough to the umpire, John Hedger. They're on their station enough. St Paul's are now charging. They're in, coming into these enclosures. They're in front of the grandstands. Have St Edward's done enough? Have they got enough of it? lead now it's been 24 years since an edwards school on the left of your picture have won the princess elizabeth challenge cup are they going to beat out the giants of st paul's who are going for the title defense and they're winding up they're ratcheting the rating well here we are coming past this progress board it's 10 strokes to go it looks like it's half a length st edwards surely have enough unless something goes wrong here we go five more strokes coming down to the line it was a length they've closed it to half continuing to move here through the progress boards but I think St Edwards they lost in 13 they lost in 14 but they will win this final of the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup by just a few seats over St Paul's School and that will be absolutely incredible uh, for the boys of St Edwards School Teddy's will claim the trophy it will be returning to Oxfordshire and uh, my word 24 years without a name the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup and they've gone and done it here in 2023.